I'm J.D. Sawyer with the Aquaponics Source. We're going to talk a little bit about financial uh, aspects of aquaponic farming uh, in 30 minutes, which is an extraordinary challenge. But I'm glad you've all had lunch and you're not like pre-lunch hangry and talking about money, which is a really bad combination. So, so this kind of worked itself out <laughs> to uh, get a little break here. Um, so here is a horrific slide that violates like every principle of PowerPoint, right? When you're only supposed to have like three bullets on your slide. Okay, so I apologize for that. You can read all this later when we post this online. Uh, but of course, the point here is there's a lot of things to think about uh, when you're considering aquaponic farming and by no means is even this a comprehensive list. So lots to consider. Some of these things may or may not affect you or be applicable to your situation. But there's a lot of important stuff in here, and a lot of other presenters have already touched on these some of these topics uh, in quite a bit more detail. But keep this list uh, with you as you're starting to plan out uh, your operation here. Uh, this particular slide, also a lot of bullets, um, but this one's really important too because there's a lot of what I call levers uh, that influence the performance and, and potential profitability uh, of your aquaponics farm and your job as a manager or if you have other people running your, your operation is to manage these variables among other things. Um, when we talk in our four-day courses on, on aquaponic farming, we spend a lot of time drilling into each one of these areas here, uh, understanding how to start up the farm and making sure that you have the right training and, and, and really the wherewithal to manage a farm. And you know, Ryan alluded to this a little bit earlier too, you know, you just got to have, you got to be creative. You got to have the willpower. You're going to have some bumps in the road and you got to really just be willing to press on. And those that do are the ones that are more likely going to have the successes because you're going to have some failures. I got plenty of failures. I've killed tons of fish. Okay. <laughs> Things happen in farming um, that you may or may not expect and you have to be resilient to those, those things. But these are all important uh, things to just keep an eye on and manage accordingly. A lot of farming is risk management, okay? Understanding the risk and your tolerance for, for risk and your ability to, to act on that uh, accordingly. And you're not gonna be able to manage everything, but just being, awareness, being aware is, is the first step for sure. Um, so as we start to dip a little bit more into some numbers, uh, certainly considering what it's going to take to fund this operation, of course, is a really big thing. We've already heard some big projects earlier today and some real big money. There's a lot of exciting stuff going on in here. And these are some of the big buckets, if you will, uh, that you're going to have to, to be aware of. You may be spending a lot of money in site development, as an example. I mean, I get people that call me all the time and say, well, what does the aquaponics farm cost? And, you know, we can talk about what that aquaponics farm costs and, and then they'll say, well, you know, I'll ask them, well, when do you want to get started? Well, we, we'd like to be started in about six weeks. I mean, do you have a greenhouse? No. Do you have land? Ah, oh, we're working on it. <laughs> okay, slow down. <laughs> That's probably not going to happen in six weeks because there's a lot of things that might need to happen to just prepare the property for the greenhouse or for the foundations and slab and then the utilities and bringing water in. So there's a lot of other costs that are well beyond just the aquaponic system that have to be factored into the all of the working or excuse me, the uh, capital that you need to get started. And then there is this thing, working capital, which we'll touch on a little bit later as we look at cash flow. You're more than likely going to be operating at a deficit for some period of months. I'd like to predict that as much as I can ahead of time, and the tool that I'll walk through uh, a little bit here helps you, helps you do that. Um, and you know, the little things too. Uh, again, stuff outside of just the aquaponic system in the greenhouse, but the stainless steel work surfaces and the, and the hand wash sinks and office equipment. And listen, I'd like to have a stereo in the farm. All that stuff, we need to have music. Plants like music. That's a whole other topic, right? So. Get all that stuff figured out ahead of time as much as you, you can, okay? So, so this little slide here, so I, I wasn't able to actually use the, the actual spreadsheet because it's fun to change numbers and play with the, all this stuff. Um, 
And this is actually based on a program uh, that we have available on our website. So I have information and I have a little coupon code for y'all to, uh, to download this. This is a spreadsheet program um, that I've been working on for several years. And uh, so we'll go through a little bit of aspects of this because we don't have a ton of time here, of course. Um, but this is what I call the back of the napkin. Almost anyone can sort of do a basic, you know, get a basic understanding of production in the system. So oftentimes we're talking about deep water culture troughs. So, you know, we can put in the widths and the lengths and the number of troughs and so forth. And then we can determine how many raft boards are going to be in the system. We can look at what the planting density is going to be. And I don't know if you can tell from this, this slide or not. But these cells, there's certain cells that are blue. Does that look blue to you? It kind of looks all white from here. But those are cells that you can actually change the variables for, OK, um, that don't have formulas in them. And so you can actually start to manipulate planting density. You can adjust things like culture period, which is the time in which the seedling is transplanted into the grow out trough okay, to the time that you harvest. Okay? And then you can see when you start to multiply this out here, the number of annual harvest and the total number of, of plants. Uh, and then there's this little thing called loss rate too. Okay? You're more than likely not going to sell every single thing that you plant in your system. There's a lot of things that go into that loss rate number, like pests or nutrient deficiencies or, or quality of light, or you pick up a raft board and you drop it on the floor. I mean, things happen, right? So you're going to have some amount of loss. And anytime you're doing financial planning for any business endeavor, you want to plan conservatively. You want to create scenarios, worst case, middle case, best case, and so forth. And we'll get into that in a little bit as well. But you can at least with this tool do a very quick uh, assessment of you know, how many plants I think I can grow in this system and monthly, weekly, and then you can assign a, a dollar per head and you can get a rough idea. This is back of the napkin stuff, right? So that helps you to get a, a little bit of a basic, basic idea. The idea now, and, and this is part of the tool to get a little bit more accurate, a little bit more robust, is that you're really probably not going to be monocropping one crop of lettuce, right? More than likely, based on your market research that you've already done, right, before you built the farm, which is crucial, and your business planning work you've already done, you've t determined the uh, different types of crops that you want to grow, and you've talked to restaurants and markets, or you're developing your CSA plan and so forth, and then what you can do with this tool here is start to allocate uh, however many raft boards or what percentage that you want to allocate to various different crops in the system. So in this example, we just have five different uh, crops here, romaine, bib, green star, mustard, greens, and basil. And this totals up the total number of raft boards that we have available to plant in. And what's nice about this now is now we can start to be more specific about our planting density as opposed to just one broad stroke uh, across the whole system. We may be planting our crops at different densities, okay? And so you can experiment with that. You can adjust culture time on a species specific basis here. And then you can even adjust the loss rate on a you know, species specific uh, basis as well to get a little bit more uh, tight and accurate analysis. Uh, and you'll also notice here, this is uh, just summer season. So I've set this up so you can do a summer and a winter version of this because there's a good chance this is winter season. Maybe you're not going to do basil, for example, in, in the winter months and you might switch to a different uh, product like kale. So we can make those adjustments there. We can change any of these products out. Maybe your culture time's a little bit different too, okay? Light levels are lower. You're not getting quite the yields that you might get in the summer months. So this gives you some flexibility to, to make those adjustments uh, and loss rate and so forth. So lots of ways to kind of drill into that. Now, the other side here too is we can take all those products that we just laid out. Again, I apologize, this is cut off here. But we can start to input uh, variable costs for each one of these products here. And don't get too hung up on the numbers. Some, these may or may not even be close. I, these, I just made this this morning. So sometimes I 
throw numbers in there and things get a little wacky. But the point is to focus on the tool and the system. And you're going to input your own numbers in here as you develop your own sets of data here. But you can put your C cost per plant, cost per starter plug, um, and get an idea of the total cost. Here's the loss rate that was already factored in from the previous worksheet here. And then what's really important is because, again, you've done your marketing, you've thought about your distribution plan and so forth, you can figure out, and this is actually a drop-down menu, which doesn't show here, but you can select whether you're going to sell products by a case, a 24 count, a 12 count, or by the pound, or by the clamshell, uh, depending, again, on what your, your strategy is and, and what your market uh, markets are. And then you can determine what type of packaging you want to use, and all these have costs that you can assign to those, those items, so you can really start to get a true understanding of the cost uh, of any of these given plants uh, in your system. And these variable costs will scale as you change the parameters of scale. So I can go back to the first worksheet where I put in my 8 by 80 foot troughs and change those numbers, and I can change all this stuff too which is kind of neat, which lets you, it's fun. I mean, you can play with various different scales because I get people all the time that say, hey, well, you know, what scale do I have to be at to make money? I don't know. It depends, right? The two worst words you don't really want to hear, it depends. It depends on all those variables I, I mentioned a little bit earlier there. Every situation is going to be different. Okay, and we can sell basil for 12 bucks a pound in Denver, and it might be $3 a pound in California, right? So it's just totally, totally different. There's not a single uh, answer to that question, as much as that would be neat and tidy for everyone, there's not. So as you follow this along here, after you figure out your packaging type, all these numbers will trigger out accordingly, and then you can start to put in what you expect to be selling this product for based upon, again, your market research and all that. And so you might be doing 48, 50 bucks a case, maybe you're $2 ahead. And I think you suggested 227 was the national wholesale average. Great, you know, you can start plugging some of those types of numbers in as you're doing your due diligence here uh, and starting to develop a, a revenue profile. Uh, and again, you can do this for the summer season and you can do this for the winter season because in the winter, what can we have happening in the winter? We may be the only game in town, right? We may be able to charge a little bit more. We've got a premium product here. So this will give you the flexibility to uh, adjust those price points uh, accordingly. Okay? So all this will tally up here uh, in revenue. And this is eventually going to land itself into a financial pro forma. Um, all right, you guys got all this here? If I can just skip over this. <laughs> so. Um, this, uh, what, again, is cut off, unfortunately. I don't know how to fix that right now. But uh, this is part of the program is to generate a two-year uh, monthly cash flow. This is the kind of stuff uh, that, that bankers, financiers are, are going to want to see. Or even if you're self-financing financing this farm, you're going to want to see this too, right? So good information here. And you've got various different categories. This is produce sales and fish sales up in the revenue line here. This is other. And right now, we're not really talking about other streams of income at the moment. Um, but you may have other streams of income. You may need other streams of income to help support your farm operation. Okay? Um, this is COGS over here. So all, all of these numbers that we input in, this variable costs like packaging and seed costs and so forth, those are all going to trigger out into a two-year cash flow and also a four-year financial pro forma, sort of big picture view of all of this. And then you've got operating costs. And you, know, you can adjust these categories if you want. These are categories that, that we typically use right off of our chart of accounts for, uh, for the farm. So you've got things like water quality supplies and uh, pest management supplies, nutrient ingesters, uh, marketing, energy, of course. Uh, this is labor that you totally can't see here. Um, so uh, not surprisingly, that's the biggest number typically uh, in your, your operating budget and, and so forth. You may have um, you know, debt service here uh, based upon any uh, loan commitments that you have. Um, and so this will tally up all of your operating costs 
and give you an idea of, of net income. And I've purposely left this looking sort of down and out, so I don't want to bum everyone out here, but there's not a lot of positive results right now, right? Okay? Okay, that's reality, folks. It happens in farming, <laughs> and, and please be ready for it. Um, and you want to see this ahead of time, right? It's better to fail on paper, um, that, that philosophy. And, and so it's important to understand that, hey, there's a good chance you're going to be running at a loss, but how long are you going to be running at a loss? And what kind of cash or working capital do I need to, to cover that and to get through that period? And so that's what up here, you can actually put in a beginning cash balance. And if you look across here, this will kind of tell you how you're sort of burning through that, that cash, but whether or not you're going to be, you know, sustaining and staying above water here and covering these deficits, that's something that the tool you can help you figure out. And you'll also know here too, there's a bunch of goose eggs up here, right? In the first couple months, I'm not selling anything because right now the way the program works, you can input the first month that you are seeding. Okay. And it's likely going to be about two months before you really have anything that's sellable. So we've set it up so you're really not even accounting for those first few months. And also, and we don't have time to get into it because there's a lot of other worksheets in this program, but we've created what I call the startup curve. Okay? There's likely no way you're going to come right out of the gate selling 100% of your product at 100% the price points you want to sell it at. Okay? You're just getting started, you're learning your customer base, you're making mistakes, the, the system ecology hasn't really flushed itself out yet. It takes a while sometimes for these systems to really get up and crank in. You're learning how things work as an operator. All that stuff is going on during these first several months here. So don't be unrealistic and just assume you're gonna come out of the gate swinging and selling everything. That's probably not gonna happen. So a part of the tool, which I don't have on the slide deck, allows you to just hedge on a month-by-month -month basis a percentage uh, of growth, hopefully, that you can sort of start to ramp yourself up into that sweet spot of I can sell you know, a good portion of my product now. Um, and again, it's about creating reality, right? We want to create a reality check to this, this farm uh, financial plan. So this is an important part of, of the program. Uh, and again, this all ends up into a four-year uh, financial uh, pro forma here, so you can start to kind of project out. Again, don't get hung up on what numbers you see. Things get moved around in here a lot. But this will allow you to paint this picture, right, this financial picture as to whether or not you'll be profitable or could be profitable uh, and allow you to, again, create scenarios. Okay, best case, worst case kind of scenarios. So each one of these, um, again, for time purposes, we can't get into it, but each one of these um, uh, cost uh, centers here has its own worksheet that you can build out the, the specifics. You know, you can start to put the cost of, uh, you know, fish feed and botanagard or whatever products you're using in these categories and lay that out into the program and it'll roll all that stuff up for you so you have a uh, a pretty good look at the plan here. So for those of you that sat in yesterday, you probably saw this uh, uh, analysis. So there's some it's a, it's a analytical outputs of this program that can be helpful. And this is one of my favorite uh, slides here. And so this actually looks at the potential pr production of the scale of the system that we typed in earlier, the eight, two eight by 80 foot troughs here and then really create some, some hypothetical uh, scenarios. So let's say we're really turning this farm over. Uh, every four weeks, we're turning over the entire amount of, of holes or plants that that deep water culture system can support. Then we can argue that we could actually probably turn about 52,000 plants a year. And there's a loss rate, I think, built into this one, if I remember. And then you know down here, if you're going a little bit slower, then this is the expected output if you're not turning that at four weeks culture time, right? Uh, and so this will show you weekly plants and all that. The point of this slide, though, is to suggest that, again, not two farms or two identical farms are simply not equal, okay? The same size scale farm, one person may be aggressively able to achieve high turn rates and maybe they're even able to achieve higher price points here and you can actually change these in the program here 
um, and do quite well. And the same farmer could be having a tough time turning that product for whatever reason and also not getting the price points they need to get. And so this is the range, a theoretical range of what a given farm could actually do. And it's quite large. So this all feeds back to the it depends answer, right? Okay, when people ask, well, you know, how much money am I gonna make? I don't know. You could, you could make this, you could make this. You're probably gonna be in here somewhere, some blended margin of, of, of price points and, and, and rotations and so forth. But if you dip down and look down here, annual harvest depends on factors such as, but not limited to, a lot of these big things that we touched on a little bit earlier. Your motivation as a business owner, operator to be successful has a huge part of this. I've been involved with, with farms and people and we took over a farm early on in, in Colorado. Guy built a, a decent UVI style farm, but had no motivation to sell anything. And he sort of just built it to see if it would work and that's great. And if you're doing research and experiments and so forth, that's, that's fine but he wasn't motivated to move product weekly and manage the rotations and all that stuff. And when you do that, you know, if, if you're learning a lot, which we learned a lot from that, um, that's great. You can also learn that if you leave product in your system too long and you don't move it, there's a lot of pest pressure or a lot of other issues that come from that and it can really screw you up. It can screw up your rotational plan, your ability to stay on pace with the production of the system. So operator motivation is a big one. Of course, some of these others are pretty obvious from pest management, risk management, backup systems, okay? Power goes out, um, I need to be alerted, or if you're not getting alerted, then that's a, that's a problem. Um, so making sure you have some safety nets, some risk controls in there. Um, and then product price, that depends on a lot of factors too. So market strategy, market pricing, customer acceptance, quality of your product, your location, uh, all these things can factor into the types of price points you're going to achieve in your farm. So I tried to roll all that up into one semi-comprehensive place to just you know, illustrate the point that there's a lot of var variability in these farms. And again, your job as a, as a manager is to manage a lot of these variables. And if you do, you can start to move yourself up the, up the ladder here. Okay. Um, oh, and then this one I, I stuffed in here uh, at the last minute. So this is another um, way of scenario planning, okay? This is a tool that's all about planning. So in this particular farm model, and, and we didn't get to all these different areas here, but you've got your deep water culture. These are media beds, MB. So if you have media beds in your system, you can do tomatoes and you can, you can add any type of product you want to add in there and put price per pounds and so forth. Microgreens, which can be a great source of, of revenue, good margins and so forth. You have to have a market uh, for that and it's important. Um, uh, fish, which we're not talking about a lot at the moment. I know Ryan touched on that a little bit earlier here, but you can put in your, uh, your expected fish uh, revenue as well. And then these blue cells allow you to make changes to each one of these, these growing systems, if you will. And then you can create a revenue scenario based upon uh, the various different price points that you think you may or may not be able to achieve. Um, so this is really where you can do the best case, worst case kind of scenario planning. And all that, uh, these revenue numbers will change and it'll just map that against your uh, expected operating expenses. So you can see some net income uh, scenarios for your farm. Uh, so <clears throat> just another uh, way of, of kind of manipulating the numbers to achieve uh, some different results here. And it's all about planning. I can't emphasize that enough. Um, listen, I love to, to build a farm. I'm guilty of running out there and, and getting excited about aquaponics and building a farm and figure it out later. I didn't want to do business planning and marketing right away either. I just wanted to build a farm and raise some fish and plants and it's cool and it really is cool. But if you're serious about this being your business, it's really important to do this kind of work ahead of time now when you have the time to do it before you get into a farm or more importantly, tell yourself, I don't think this is the right thing for me, okay? And I tell people that. I don't think this is the right thing for you. 
um, because I don't want to see people fail either. And that's why this tool is important to try to figure that out ahead of time. Um, so as I said, um, this is a little bit of a sales pitch, so I apologize. But this tool uh, is downloadable from our website. And if you put in this little code here, um, gives you $20 off, which makes it about 20 bucks. So, um, so you can download it and use this uh, as you see fit. And um, hopefully you can get a lot of value out of that. And I've got maybe five minutes for questions. So I know that was a little bit of a fire hose there, but there's a lot of other aspects to this tool that I just didn't have time to show you um, that are very valuable. One of which um, is if, as you put in your uh, plant production you know, scale, your system and the number of plants, it will determine um, uh, the fish loading based upon daily feed rate, some of the stuff I think we've talked about in other sessions in terms of the design of the system. So you can, it'll actually help to design out your fish system and volume of tanks and all this other stuff. It'll give you water volume calculations. It'll give you energy calculations um, that all roll up into this too. So that's all in there as well. All right, questions. Yes, sir. What is the input dollar per hour for labor? Oh, I think I put like 15 bucks an hour in there, if I remember correctly. That's an input. This is all based upon the data that you're going to input into the system. So it, that's why every person's farm plan is going to be entirely different. You might be paying 12, you might be paying $20 an hour. At least you have a place to put that in there, right? So, yes, anyone else here? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is there any particular method that you're advising people on to determine the, not just the market price of the things they're growing, but also the capacity of the market to take it at those prices? Yeah, so is there a method we're using to determine market price and, and market capacity? Yeah, I mean, on the grass, grassroots level, some of that's just knocking on the door, right? And talking to local chefs. And I've, I've found over the years, and I'm sure Ryan and others can attest to this too, um, I've always had you know, great um, uh, cooperation and, and chefs saying, hey, this is what we pay, this is where we get it from. You know, you, ha you have to be careful not to fall into the trap, and, and I hear it all the time, where, where people, you know, I got a call the other day, for example, and the guy's like, wow, this aquaponics thing's really cool, and I talk to my, you know, local restaurant, and they're going to buy everything I grow, right? And I hear that all the time. And first of all, you're probably not talking to the right person that can make that decision, <laughs> so be careful. And that's also sometimes a, a ploy to just sort of move you on because they're busy, right? So there's a time and a place to talk to chefs, which is usually in the middle of the afternoon between the lunch and dinner rush, which is the appropriate time. Um, but ask them what they're paying and ask them where they're getting their, their product from. And I found that they all have been very forthcoming with that information. To your second question too, um, it would be advisable to do some competitive analysis. Who else is growing these certain products in the marketplace that I need to be aware of? Because there could be an oversaturation. And this is in particularly important when it comes to microgreens. Because I can tell you, if you want to sleep at night and make the numbers look really sexy, start cranking up the microgreen production, right? And because you can really do well in microgreens. However, you have to have a place to sell those. And I've seen this over and over and over again. I have a customer up in Northern Colorado that just was like, I'm gonna do you know, 800 flats of microgreens a month and it's, we're gonna make all this money and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you're in steamboat. Like, where are you gonna move all this stuff to? I, there's just no way. And I said over and over and over again, I was like, you really better know what you're doing. I've talked to people, blah, blah, blah. Well, he came back to me just recently, like a year and a half later, and he's like, I should have listened to you because he bought all these lights and all these racks and so forth, and he's not able to move all that product. And that's the kind of stuff you don't want to be stuck with in dealing with. So you have to be careful that you, the spreadsheet can be dangerous. Okay, this is a very dangerous tool. I've seen tons of people play with numbers on spreadsheets and then post all this stuff out you know, on the internet and here's how much money you can make and all that. And then you dig a little deeper and you find out they've never been farmers. They just happen to be good with a spreadsheet and they don't know the realities of what's really going on. Uh, so be careful with this tool as well. Be realistic with the data, yes. It's 
So the question, are, are bankers going to be in panic mode when you're showing a loss? Uh, maybe, but you know what? That's okay, and I'll tell you why. Because first of all, you're presenting something that's real. So when I came to a, a, a banker early on when we were looking to finance the farm, the one thing that he said to me is like, you know what? I appreciate your honesty. I swear to God. Um, and and you're farming, okay? You know, so there's there's not a lot of margin there, and I think you have to be realistic in your projections that you're going to be off operating at a loss. Like most every business in any business sector starts up, they don't usually come out of the gate profitable. Bankers are used to seeing that, so I, I wouldn't be overly concerned about that. But yeah, yeah. They, yeah, and numbers are important, okay? And I'll, one last thing to that as well. I mean, we went to farm credit early on too, and we walked in with this 40-page business plan and all the cool things aquaponics can do to change the world and all this stuff, and, and they didn't care about any of that. He said, what, what's your break-even price per, per head? What's your break? And I didn't know. You know, that was the wake up call for me. What's your break even price for your, your head of lettuce? Because in his mind, and he deals with big agricultural, you know, business plans, you know, your product, this aquaponic head of lettuce has to be competitive with every other head of lettuce out there. So at the end of the day, that's the kind of stuff that does matter. And that caused me to go back and, and you know, develop these tools because you do have to come in there with, with a sense of you've done your homework and due diligence. Otherwise, they're going to just think this is pie in the sky. And aquaponics is still pretty new, particularly if you're in banking. There's not a lot of historical reference to go by for them to make loan decisions on with this stuff. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time. Thank you.